thank you for all your support out there, out here, protecting us inside. From our hearts, we thank you very deeply. So many of you have been here every... I'm going to cry. So many of you have been here every day since the beginning of this. And you've been here 24 hours a day. Or you've been here passing by and supporting with donations, with your words, with educating people that pass by. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for the youth across the country in our communities. We're here for the youth. That's what it's always been about. So too many times their voices have been swept under the carpet. Too many times our voices have been swept under the carpet. Every generation there's another, another group that stands up and says enough is enough. But how many times do we have to do that each generation to say enough is enough? We've had too many crisis moments, too many crisis points. The partnership needs to be in place. We've heard from this government, this present government, that that partnership will be in place, but we still see, we still see in action. We still see book signings where children are killing themselves. We still see fashion shows when these children are killing themselves. Suicide packs. Suicide's been going on a long time in our communities, but these suicide packs are a fairly recent introduction. They're only a few decades old. But the disparity and the poverty and the lack of future is what has caused this. Our intent was to keep the voices of the youth of Attawapiskat focused and then the attention of INAC here and the government. And we did that. We came what we accomplished what we came we accomplished what we came to do. So Nyawa go to everybody here, Chimagwech to everybody here. I'm gonna pass the mic on to the next person. My name is Carrie Lester Moha from Six Nations Grand River Territory. I'm Ojibwe Nation, Bear Clan. My name is Strong Hearted Woman, that's my spirit name. We had so much strength and support behind us. We saw on our page all these people were constantly, you know, giving us props to keep going. And it all started because one person, Catherine Gandhi, said, that's enough. And also, I want to thank the people that stood out here day and night through the rain and the wind. <laughs> Because without them, people would have walked by and never knew, known that, you know, up to 20 people were sitting holding up in an office day and night. So for them, special thanks go to them. I remember before we took occupation, the day before I heard Chen say, well, just move them. We're just going to move them off the land. And so that was the government's reply on what to do with these people is to just move them off their traditional lands and then to sort of reprimand them that while they're traditional they won't leave. First of all we were there because we were forced to be there in these remote reserves. We moved with the land, we moved with the animals, we moved with the seasons. We didn't stay in one place. Reservations and reserves were not who we were. And then when they moved us over then now they're trying to take it. It's genocide. It's assimilation that we're talking about here. It's continued assimilation and genocide that they could just move us off of our territories and have access to the resources. Because that's what the government cares about. Not the people, but the trees and the gold and the diamonds. So we have to constantly be on them. Right now we have a victory for one. But we want to have victory for all of the Native children. Everyone says get rid of the Indian Act. I would love to get rid of the Indian Act. But without that, we have nothing to fight them against. We have to take it apart, yes. And if you look at today and all this week, we are strong together. We can do it together. There's so much pride in the Native communities. And for so long, we weren't allowed to be proud. We felt shame. But today, we're very proud people. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank all the support that came 
you know, for, for us being in there was very, very hard. But we had to exert our sovereignty and make uh, people understand that uh, we're sovereign nations and that uh, we care about our young people. And not just that, that we want to have a future for that for that seven generations that haven't been born yet. My, my, my sons and my other son here, his great, great, great grandchildren is the world that we're fighting for because if, if these people are killing themselves then there's not going to be a nation left. And the other thing too is, is that what we're also doing is we're letting people know that um, it's time for you know our chiefs and our elders and our, our uh, faith keepers and bundle carers to, to, to bring back those ceremonies to where they've been forgotten. Yeah. And our message to Trudeau is that the great law is about the Canadian law. We never surrendered our land or our territory to these people. The great law of peace of the Haudenosaunee is the, great, is the only law here that governs our people and implementing with the Gushwent of the Turo Wampum. So I just want to thank everybody for supporting us and we want to continue that support with our brothers in the other occupations, Vancouver, Winnipeg, Regina, Edmonton. I don't know, there's so many. I, I, I lost con. Big Witch! Turtle Island Sovereignty forever! There's a petition uh, online and somebody started it against De Beers. They've taken out so much money and hold so much money and they even have a youth trust fund up there and it's billions and billions of dollars that they have taken and they, they don't, they don't, they give Afuatiscat about four million dollars a year and they're, they've taken to date billions of dollars out of there. We're sick of begging for money from this INAC place. That money needs to be freed up. And we're not going to, this isn't over. Like this, uh, we didn't plan this. They just didn't answer us. That's why we stayed. And we told them we will be back. And we will. And we're, we're not going to be alone this time. We have allies and people are listening and realizing the policies of this Canadian government on Turtle Island is just a state, a corporation, that's just stealing money, and it has been all along. We're going to keep going and building allies. The Facebook page will stay up, and it will be that we can uh, do actions together, and by actions I mean go after the Northern Store, that's one, one, uh, yeah, yeah. So there's, we have a lot of suggestions, and, um, we, we're going to go forward. We, we haven't been just sitting up there. We've been working really hard brainstorming and talking to a lot of people, not just INAC. We only met with them twice. So um, a big shout out to everybody that's been here and to everybody that was inside. Um, but this work is just, is just starting. Yeah, and I could see just how unity is. Black, white, yellow, and red. And finally, what our ancestors have been telling us, what we've been knowing is that this earth is changing and there's more solidarity than ever. In the 1960s, when the Black Panthers and the, Ind the, Indian, the American Indian movement came together, it was a strength, it was something that the FBI could not deal with. So they ended up framing a lot of people, such as Leonard Peltier. So this is what they do to us when they want to silence us. But enough is enough. There are so many different issues, such as um, suicide, child welfare, high incarceration rates among men and women that are indigenous, poverty, and that is not the way that we should be treated in our own country. So with that being said, and following the words of what Sigrid said, this is just the beginning and it is not going to stop. There are, there are a lot of elite people in this country 
and as well as countries all around the world that have been getting off way too easy and living off the avails of children, women, and men. And it has to stop, and it's going to. Yeah. Jimmy Glitch. If this conversation continues, the back and forth, back and forth, and we all know that the relationship with Indigenous people is broken, then we need to be the ones to keep them accountable. Because when things like this happen is when it makes change. Right. Why do we have no say in our political movements? Shame. Yeah. Shame. Shame. I see so many faces here. All different nations. We are all coming together for a good goal. And I hope you know that all First Nations people will stand up behind yours as well. I encourage people to look at the communities that have not gotten this awareness. There is a community that has been in a state of emergency for the same issue of youth suicide for three years. And there is no response. And the only reason why the Ottawa Piscat got their response is because of this. Uh, I'm really honored to see uh, the Rainbow Warriors here. All the people of different colors, the white people, black people, red, yellow. This is what it's about. This is community. You know, this is what uh, this is what they don't want. They don't want us getting together like this. But this, that's why it's so important. You know, we're out here for the youth. We're out here for indigenous people. We're out here for ourselves. It's important not to wait for the government to fix all the problems for us. Thank you. You know, I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of going up my hand out to these offices here for my status card or for my rights. I know who I am. One of the things that I'm learning about in my studies at Ryerson is all about the consequences of what has happened to our people because of colonization. Losing our language, losing our customs. I've seen it in the research. It clearly shows that these kids need to be able to access their language their traditions, their ceremonies. They need access to their elders. We need our elders to be healthy in order to be able to live up to their responsibility and teach the children. In the communities that I have seen where they have the lowest rates of suicide and abuse issues, substance abuse, it is those communities where they have been able to reclaim who they are. They have been able to bring the children back to the elders. And for me, I need Canada to make that commitment to give back, help us reclaim what was stolen from us. I'm going to be so brief because we are here to stand in solidarity. We are in awe. We are in so much awe at the love, at the courage, at the bravery. Fuck these colonial systems. They are killing us. And we stand against this. And we're not going anywhere, we're here. The family that we have established from this, from everything that's been happening in the past month, this is forever. You know, in so many years, we put up with the bullshit of the Canadian government. And uh, every freaking leader they ever had tried to get us voted our votes so we couldn't have votes. You know, they tried to do that to us. You know, they, they, they imprison us just to keep us from showing our true warriorship. You know, they never looked at the people in Canada and always giving money all the way out there. So are they digging into all the money that they owe the indigenous people of this country? And that makes me so angry and upset because my forefathers, my grandfathers and ancestors occupied this whole land before they came along and took it all from us because we didn't understand English. That's the reason. You walked away, we stay. You walked away, we stay. You walked away, we stay. You walked away, we stay.